Hello my wonderful students. Today you will learn about the metric system in methods used to measure stuff, which as scientists we need to know. Uh, right now I'm going to ask you some questions. What do you prefer to use? Yards or meters? Quarts or liters? Ounces or grams? Do you have a preference? Do you not? Do you have some experience with all of them? You probably do. Uh, but I'm going to go through this presentation real quick and I think it'll be easier for us to understand meters, liters, and grams because that is just much easier to convert. It always hasn't been meters, liters, grams, or inches, or feet, or pounds, or ounces. It was weirder than that before even. Uh, do you know how long a cubit is? We don't use it a lot these days. It's the distance from your your elbow. Look at I'm dabbing. My goodness, what got into me? It, anyway, it's the distance from your elbow to your fingertip. Seems right. I mean, if me and Greta each had something to measure in cubits, we'd come up with a much different value. My cubit is ginormous compared to Greta's. Anyway, we stopped doing that. Um, we used to measure mass and weird things too. Uh, it's not just length. Uh, grains, pounds, oh we still do that a little bit. Talent, which is a hundred pounds. Shekel, excuse me sir, can you, I please have a shekel's worth of that licorice you're selling? We don't really do that anymore because it's somewhat inexact. We've gotten better at this. The whole world has gotten better at this. Look at this. This is a map of all the countries that use the metric system as their official way to measure things. Uh, you'll notice the United States is in red. So is Liberia. Did Mr. Prattner tell you how to tell where Liberia is yet? It's right there. This is Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Those are the only three nations in the entire world that don't uh, officially use the metric system as their official way to measure different things. There's a reason they do all these countries. Uh, they can go from a single unit. They don't have to uh, go between languages, uh, between countries. They avoid needing conversion factors when making calculations. Have you ever tried to figure out how many inches are in a mile? It takes a little while. You gotta know how many feet are in a mile. 5,280. It's kind of fun to remember that stuff. And then you got to remember that there's 12 inches in a foot, so if you do the proper calculation, you'll end up with inches in a mile. It's not the easiest thing to do always, uh, especially with masses and ounces and grams and all that stuff. Um, it gets a little complicated with volume too. So metric system uh, is probably the way to go. It's the easiest uh, way for scientists, at least, to measure things. Now, when you're in the kitchen, I think it's kind of cool to use the imperial system. That's It's a good bit of American folklore in a little bit. Okay, so um, some things I need you to remember. I don't need you to remember how long a cubit is, or a hand span, or a, anything that we were talking about before. I do need you to know what the basic unit in the metric measurement system is for length, mass, and volume. For length, we're talking about the meter. The meter is slightly longer than the imperial system's yard. Uh, when I think of meter, I think of the 100 meter dash uh, that is usually dominated by Usain Bolt or has been for the past 12 years of Olympics and World Championships. Uh, for mass, the basic unit for mass is gram. Uh, which is about the actual mass of a large paper clip. That's it. It doesn't have a lot of mass in a gram, but that is the basic unit for mass, is a gram. Uh, for volume, it's a liter. You might think of like a two liter of pop or something like that. Yes, two liters is, uh, the liters is the measurement for volume in the metric system. So please do remember this meter gram and liter. If you can remember those basic units, you can really start to figure out how to convert. And this little saying right here is going to help you do those conversions. 
instead of multiplying times 12 and 5,280 to get the right uh, unit, uh, in the metric system all you have to do is move the decimal point. Now you still do need to know some things like what these prefixes mean, like kilo, hecto, deca aren't used as much. There's the base unit, deci, and then the more used centa, like centimeter or centiliter or centigram, or milligram or milliliter and uh, millimeter. So milla is one thousandth, you can see, centa is one hundredth. Uh, that goes from large to small. And there is a saying that I'd like you to remember that is, kick her duck under daddy's cement mixer. The high school uses that anyway. You could probably come up with your own mnemonic device, but I would probably use this one because this one will be referred to most in your scientific careers in at Byron Public Schools. So, kick stands for kilo, her stands for hecto, that's on hundred, uh, duck stands for deca, under stands for unit, the basic unit like meter, liter, or gram. Uh, daddy's would stand for deca, cement would stand for centa, and mixer is milla, which is one thousand. Kick her duck under daddy's cement mixer should help you if you can write that across the top and then remember the prefix it stands for, uh, you're golden. You just start moving the decimal point. Uh, we'll have some examples for this for sure uh, that will help you out beyond uh, this video lesson. All right, so now for the measuring part. Uh, measuring volume can be a little bit tricky. Um, for If it's a perfect rectangular prism like you see here, a cube, uh, you just measure base times the height times the width. Okay, base times height times width, base times or length times width times height. Uh, either way is going to give you the proper volume for a perfect rectangular prism. There's a lot of things that aren't perfect rectangular prisms in the world, and if you want to know the val volume of that, uh, you can use the displacement method. If it's a liquid, you can't and irregularly shaped objects, you would use a graduated cylinder like this or a measuring cup, something you could find in the kitchen. Um, the thing with the irregularly shaped objects, like uh, Archimedes example, maybe I'll tell you in class uh, of how he figured this out, if you submerse something in water it will displace its volume in water. So you dunk something in this graduated cylinder that fits inside there, you just measure how much the volume of water goes up. So if it goes up to 50 and it was at 43, you probably you ha definitely have an object that has a volume of 7 milliliters if that was the unit you were measuring in. More on that later. Uh, one thing to note uh, that when you do measure volume uh, in a graduated cylinder, always measure to the bottom of the meniscus. That's the name for this uh, curved line that you might see when you measure things using a graduated cylinder. Um, it, there's a chemical reason that uh, it would cling to the sides rather than to one another to create that curved line or meniscus, uh, but we just need to know that you need to measure to the bottom of it. Um, I do have a website where you can get some practice. Uh, this will be in your Google Doc. Uh, get some practice converting uh, meters to kilometers, meters to millimeters, uh, and kilograms to grams, and so on. Uh, you just have to know how to move the decimal point, and we'll definitely get practice on that in class as well. The other thing that uh, I give you a link to is how to measure uh, how to measure the mass of something use a using a triple beam balance. This online example works pretty well. Uh, let's try to measure the, the mass of this uh, calculator, okay? The big thing to do is to start big, go big. So I'm going to start sliding this to the right. If you look over here, you'll see that I haven't uh, put enough weight to make it go down yet. So we want, eventually we want this uh, pointer to go directly to zero, which is uh, evidenced by this red 
point itself. So it's still not enough. Still not enough. I'm going big first. Now 400 was too much, so I have to go back to 300. I know it's 300 some grams. The next thing I would do is the 10 spot, the next biggest spot. So go from big to small with this, people. Let's try 40. Oh, 40 was too much. 30 was too much. So I know it's 320 something. Now I'm to the one spot. Maybe I'll drag it to the six. Almost there. It's eight too far. Just a tad. All right. I think we're level. So now you just add them up. It's 327.7. 327.7. .7 grams that calculator has a mass of. Okay, we'll get some practice. We'll see you next time.